Littlefinger greets Eddard upon his arrival in King's Landing. They quickly catch up, and Bellish recalls his duel with Brandon Stark, stating that Brandon had left a scar from Petter's navel to collarbone. At the first small council meeting with Ned as the hand, Littlefinger reports that the realm is six million gold dragons in debt, half of it owed to Hal's Lannister. Caitlin Stark and Esser Roderick Castle attempt to sneak into the city, but are spotted by one of Littlefinger's men. They are taken to meet Littlefinger at one of his brothels. Caitlin is angered by their treatment, but asks Littlefinger for aid. She is trying to identify the people who tried to have her son Bran Stark killed. Littlefinger is able to answer this quickly. The elaborate dagger wielded by the assassin used to be his, but he lost it in a bet with Tyrion Lannister. Littlefinger fetches Eddard to meet his wife, but when Eddard realizes he was being brought to a brothel, he thinks Littlefinger is insulting him by saying his wife is a whore. Eddard throws Littlefinger up against a wall before Caitlin appears and Eddard becomes pacified. After hearing her news, he vows to find the truth and expose the Lannisters to Robert and Littlefinger agrees to be his ally in this, for the affection he once bore Caitlin as a youngster. Eddard correctly believes that Littlefinger is still in love with his wife. Bellish attends a small council meeting concerning discourse due to the visitors attracted by Robert's tourney for Eddard, where he is told that he must find expenses to strengthen the city watch of King's Landing. Littlefinger meets with Eddard and suggests that he keep his investigation into John Aaron's death lower in profile, where he reveals that Pycelle has told him of Eddard's possession of the lineages and histories of the great houses of the Seven Kingdoms. After pointing out a gardener as a spy of Cersei Lannister, an urchin boy as a little bird of Varys and a septa as one of his own, he gives Eddard some interesting intelligence. John Aaron's former squire has been knighted and will fight in the forthcoming Hands tourney. He also advises him to investigate an armorer located in the city. Eddard decides that Littlefinger may be more trustworthy than he first thought, but Littlefinger discourages him from thinking that way. Littlefinger sits next to Sansa Stark during the tournament, and remarks that she and Joffrey have had a lover's quarrel. When her sister, Arya, asks about how he got his moniker, he tells her of how his home, the Fingers, was combined with his small height as a child. Following the death of Esser Hugh at the hands of Gregor Clegane, Bellish then tells Sansa that Gregor, the mountain that rides, has a dark reputation. He pushed his little brother Sandor's face into a fire for taking and playing with a toy of his when they were young, burning him severely. Littlefinger recommends that Sansa not spread that story around. Littlefinger loses a bet to Renly Baratheon over the joust between Esser Loris Tyrell and Esser Gregor Clegane. He makes it clear that he knows about Renly's sexual relationship with Loris, to Renly's discomfort. He then explains to Sansa that Loris had been crafty in his attack, to which Sansa defends Loris's honor. Petter rebuffs this by saying that gold provides exception. Varys finds Littlefinger in the Great Hall staring at the Iron Throne where he reveals that he would intend to execute all those who have ever mocked or looked down on him if he was king. Varys reveals that he knows about Littlefinger's assistance in Eddard's investigation of John Aaron's death and reminds Littlefinger of the consequences that may befall him should the Lannisters discover his involvement. In response, Littlefinger reveals that he already knows about Varys having met with both Eddard and Illyrio Mopatis, a Pentashi magister representing House Targaryen. Their conversation is interrupted by Renly, who informs them that Robert will be joining them at their small council meeting. They then both support the motion to have Daenerys Targaryen and her unborn child assassinated before the Dothraki can invade Westeros. Petter in particular emphasizes that the situation should be dealt with quickly, comparing the situation to unwanted sex. Littlefinger later introduces Eddard to Majen, a prostitute and mother of yet another of King Robert's bastard children. Outside the brothel, Eddard gets into a fight with Esser Jaime Lannister. Littlefinger flees, promising to return with the city watch. Littlefinger is stunned when Eddard orders that Gregor Clegane be arrested and executed for his raids on the Riverlands and when he orders Tywin Lannister to present himself at court to answer for his bannerman's crimes. Littlefinger reminds Eddard that Tywin is the richest man in Westeros and that it is gold that wins wars, not armies. Eddard disagrees asking why Tywin is not the king if this is the case. Littlefinger instructs the newly arrived Rose and another prostitute, Armeka, on how to please their customers and make them happy. When they ask him to join them, he refuses, saying that he only ever had eyes for one woman. He tells them about his past, 
how he loved and fought a duel for a woman. He lost and subsequently realized that he could never beat those in power by honorable means, as they would never let him compete on equal terms and will defeat them with his intellect. When Rose asks him what he wants, he says, oh, everything, before excusing the two prostitutes. Later, Eddard tells him the truth of Joffrey's parentage and his plan to install Stannis on the throne when Robert dies. Littlefinger suggests instead that they let Joffrey rule but act as the powers behind the throne. If he does not mature into the king they want, they can expose his dirty secret and install Lord Renly instead. Eddard rejects the plan as treason and instead asks Littlefinger to win over the city watch to their cause. Littlefinger agrees, but later the city watch turns on Eddard's men and kills them, while Littlefinger holds a dagger to Eddard's throat, pointing out, I did warn you not to trust me. Lord Bellish asks the Queen to allow Sansa Stark to prove her loyalty as he attends the girl's audience with the Queen and the Council. He defends Sansa during her testimony, suggesting that she is innocent of any wrong, much to the chagrin of Varys, who believes that Sansa's confession is the only way to free Ned, and Pycelle, who is under threat from the Lannisters. Subsequently, Cersei orders that Sansa write to her brother, Rob, in order to settle the situation peacefully. He stands with the small council as the details of Joffrey's reign are read out and Barristan Selmy's position is ordered to be taken up by Jaime Lannister. A snide remark from Bellish at Selmy's expense causes the seasoned knight to draw his sword and toss it at the king's feet. He glances suspiciously at Varys as Sansa seeks pardon for her father's actions. Bellish watches on as Eddard Stark confesses at his trial and is executed. Littlefinger discusses kingship with Varys and they engage in banter revolving around the Master of Whisperer's lack of genitalia. They eventually acknowledge their mutual admiration and respect of one another, before being interrupted by Joffrey and his entourage. 